Two weeks have passed since the Japanese government acknowledged that contaminated groundwater from the Fukushima nuclear plant might be leaking into the ocean. The government and the plant's operator are doing all they can to stop the leaks. They've announced a series of countermeasures. But experts warn that there are more pressing issues than just focusing on the groundwater. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa has more. Crews at Kushima Daiichi have spent days working on their latest stopgap measure. They've been driving long pipes into the ground at the nuclear plant. They will use the pipes to pump up tons of radioactive groundwater before it reaches the ocean. But they admit they can't capture all of the tainted water. Two weeks ago, Government officials said that hundreds of tons of groundwater flow from a mountain through the site every day. 400 tons filters into the reactor buildings. The officials estimate 300 tons makes its way through a contaminated area below, becomes radioactive, then seeps into the ocean. Experts from the Nuclear Regulation Authority were firm about resolving the problem quickly. We must find a way to stop the groundwater from leaking into the ocean right away. Managers with Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, are planning a longer-term measure. They are considering building a network of pipes around the plant and running coolant through it to freeze the soil. That, they say, would create a dam to block groundwater from reaching the contaminated area. But the project would take one to two years to complete. One expert is questioning the way the government and TEPCO have been handling the problem. Professor Jota Kanda has been studying the effects of radiation on the sea ever since the Fukushima accident. He says TEPCO slowed the response to the crisis by refusing to admit the leaks were even happening. We should have had discussions based on the fact that radioactive materials have been leaking from the plant. Kanda argues government statistics don't add up. He says a daily leakage of 300 tons doesn't explain the current levels of radiation in the water. According to my research, there are now three gigabecquerels of cesium-137 flowing into the port at Fukushima Daiichi every day. But for the 300 tons of groundwater to contain this much cesium-137, one liter of groundwater has to contain 10,000 becquerels of the radioactive isotope. Kanda's research and monitoring by TEPCO puts the amount of cesium-137 in the groundwater around the plant at several hundred becquerels per liter at most. He's concluded that radioactive isotope is finding another way to get into the ocean. He's calling on the government and TEPCO to identify contamination routes other than groundwater. If we focus on groundwater too much without contemplating other causes, the situation won't be resolved. There must be routes other than groundwater that are contaminating the ocean. So what we have to do now is consider all possibilities as we figure out a solution to the problem. Professor Kanda says the volume of radioactive particles discharged into the ocean is much smaller than the volume released immediately after the accident. But he says there may be other sources of tainted water stored up inside the plant's infrastructure. He says that water is highly contaminated, and if it gets into the ocean, it would again have a devastating impact. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World.